in the upper motor neuron, neuron lesion classical one is the myelopathy okay so other may be the brain stem involvement and above brain stem i'll just make it one okay above brain stem or you can i will make it okay internal capsule probably corona radiata and the cortex okay so myelopathy so if you have a myelopathy usually after the road traffic accident your your, your patient may have the paraparesis or quadriparesis so if you have a myelopathy first of all the classical presentation of myelopathy is the paraparesis or if the lesion is at the level of the cervical cord then your patient may have the quadriparesis weakness of all the limbs or weakness of the bilateral lower limbs and the 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 bladder and bowel functions are basically controlled by the uh, local reflexes in the spinal cord so if somebody has the myelopathy then what you what you have to understand is that they may have the bladder and the uh, bowel dysfunctions if somebody has the you know incontinence or uh, uh, urinary retention then you may have to think about the myelopathy then other than that uh, in case of the myelopathy there can be be some local symptoms like backache and yeah you know the myelopathy is upper motor neuron lesion so after the completion of the spinal shock your patient may have classically you can say the hyper exaggerated reflex that chronos can be classical you can get in case of the uh, myelopathy you can see the hypertonic limbs in case of the myelopathy but uh, for you people when you have to suspect the myelopathy is that paraparesis or quadriparesis and the bladder and bowel involvement with some local symptoms maybe okay that is what about the myelopathy regarding the brain stem uh, i have not discussed regarding the cortico bulbar tract but what happens in case of the brain stem is that brain stem is that suppose uh, mid brain pons and the middle oblongata okay i will make the two die here like that okay so what happen is that suppose the there is if, if there is any problem in the pons like here now think about the uh, cortical spinal tract cortical can come like this and ear will be crossing in the cortical spinal tract so what will happen if there is a some problem in the right side of the pons so we will have the weakness in the left side of your body because cortical spinal tract only crosses at the level of the mid middle oblongata so if i have a problem in the right side of my pons i will have the weakness in my the left side of my body okay that may be the hemiparesis but there are some the cranial nerve that is classically 5 6 7 and the 8 so 5 6 7 and 8 will arise from the pons so let's suppose seventh cranial nerve seventh cranial nerve then what will happen so if there is any problem in the right side of the pons then the right seventh cranial nerve will go here so if i have any problem in the right side of pons my right there will be the problem in the right facial nerve and the weakness of the left side of the body that is what we call the crossed paralysis and this crossed paralysis the mean that in the body i have a problem in one side and in the face i have problem in another side is a classical feature of the brain stem involvement so if you see any the cross paralysis always think about the brain stem involvement and definitely if there is a mid brain involvement from the mid brain there arises the cranial of 3 and 4 so if there is any problem in the oculomotor nerve and the trochlear nerve that you can see in the eyes then always you have to think about the mid brain involvement 
like that. So, if there is a kernel of involvement, which is usually which is usually a low lower motor neuron type, as well as the hemiparesis, think about the brainstem involvement. And regarding the internal capsule, as we have already discussed, uh, the internal capsule is the like the area where there will be the densely packed axons. So even if there is a small lesion in the internal capsule, then the effect of that lesion will be the huge. So you have the dense hemiplegia. So if you have the, the 0 by 5 power in the upper limb and the 0 by 5 power in the lower limb, that is a dense hemiplegia, even if you have a facial nerve involvement with a small lesion, then that is a feature of the internal capsule. Uh, lesion that classically you can guess, get in case of a lacunar infarct of the internal capsule. So, tense hemiplegia is a classical feature of the internal capsule. Uh, regarding the coronary data is just a, uh, I have already discussed, you will have the like there may be the lesions here. So, they may have the disproportionate weakness in case of the coronary corona data because the fibers are radiated from the different parts of the brain. And last one is the cortex. So, what do you think? Yeah, if you have a if you have a problem in the cortex, definitely we will have the hemiparesis, but that will be the disproportionate to one. Why? I will I will just discuss in the next class. But always remember that if you have a problem in the cortex or cortical stroke, you will have the hemiparesis, which is, which is usually of the disproportionate to one. And there are some cortical features. I think you know, so probably you may have uh, the altered sensorium, seizure activity uh, and I think you know the, there are different areas in the brain like uh, Broca's areas or Wernicke's areas. So if, you, if there is a problem in the Broca's areas, what will happen? You, you will have the aphasia, motor aphasia, you cannot speak, your patient can't speak. So, if there is any speech problem like aphasia, then always think that your patient have an involvement of the cortex. So, the cortic, cortical, cortex localizing symptoms are maybe problem in the speech like aphasia, seizure, then sensorium and sometimes the visual agnosia, um, then there are sometimes there may be the asterognosis, these are the features of the cortex cortical involvement. So, to summarize the today's chapter, we have discussed regarding the neuroanatomy, basic neuroanatomy. You have to know what is gray matter and what is white matter and where that lies in, in, a, in a cortex as well in the spinal cord. Then you have to know regarding the origin of the corticospinal tract, where it get crossed what happened at the level of the spinal cord. Then we have also discussed regarding the upper motor neuron lesion or upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron. The boundary is the anterior horn cell. Then we have to, we have discussed regarding the different terminologies that we need to know to understand the motor weakness. Then we have, we know so, if there is any patient with the weakness, then we have to differentiate whether it is the upper motor neuron lesion or lower motor neuron lesion. Then in the no lower motor lesion, we have discussed what is the problem, whether the problem is in the muscles, that is myopathy, whether it is a neuromuscular junction disorder, whether it is a peripheral nerve disorder or whether it is a anterior horn cell disorder. Yeah. Then in the upper motor neuron part, we have discussed what are the features of the myelopathy, what are the features of brain stem involvement, what are the features of internal capsule what are the features of coronary data and what are the features of the cortic, cortic involvement. I think with this basic knowledge regarding the uh, neurology, it will be sufficient enough to approach any patient with the motor weakness that you are going to encounter probably in your exam, probably in your emergency room or probably in the OPD and that will be helpful to do the rational investigation of your question. Thank you. We will meet you again. Okay.